Hey, I will do the challenge occupations from the subsection advanced select of SQL and hacker rank. So we're given this table occupations that has the columns name and occupation. And we're asked to produce the following. The sample output should be a table. Each column is a list of names that follow the same profession. For example, in this case here, we see that we got Jenny and Samantha in the output for the first column. What is that column about? Now, if you look at the input, Samantha is a doctor and Jenny is also a doctor. So we take all the names whose occupation is doctor and place them as the first column here. And then we do the same for every other occupation. For Ashley, that's a professor, Christine and Katie, we place them in the second column because they're all with the occupation professor. Do the same for uh, the actor and the singer one. I will solve this problem using window functions, derived tables, and aggregate functions. And I will use my SQL. So to help you understand how my solution is going to go, I want to first talk about window function. Let's say we're going to just select name occupation from occupations first so we can understand what the data looks like. So as you can see, we got the name of their corresponding occupation. Now let's say I want to count how many rows I have. So I can do select count star from occupations, right? And click run code. As you can see, there are 18 rows. But what happened here was the 18 rows collapsed into a single row with a number in the output. What if I wanted to have that 18 for every single row and I wanted to print the original rows but with the 18 as the third column? Now to do that, I can do a window function like this. If I do select count star over like so, and I can even add the name and occupation back here so you can better visualize it. So when I say the over there with the parentheses, I can now get that count for every row. So you can see 18 is in every row. So it's important we understand this concept because we're going to use it to produce the output for this problem. And we can go even further. What if I want to count I want to partition this count. Say I want to count just the number of people in a certain profession. So I can go here inside the parentheses for over and I can say partition by and I'm going to give occupation. So if I do that, it's going to count by occupation. So you can see Samantha is an actor and now it's no longer 18 rows, it's four because in total it found four rows that all have occupation actor. So we can see every actor will now have four. And for doctor, they'll have three because there are in total three doctors. And for professor, seven. Okay. Now we can go further. What if we want to take these in order by name? Say I want Eve to come before Samantha. I can go inside partition by occupation and say order by and I can say name. So as you can see, it orders by name. Eve comes before Jennifer, Kat, and Samantha. So we're going to keep these concepts in mind because we're going to use for the solution. So now I want to create a column for each of these professions. So I can let's start with just uh, one, the first one that's going to be doctor. So I'm going to go here. We have one, two, three. And we're going to create the fourth column. And for this column, I want to display the value for the name only if it matches the profession or occupation that I want. In this case, I'm going to create the column for doctor, so it should match occupation equals doctor. So to do that, I'm going to use an if statement. You can also use case or whatever other thing. So if the occupation is equal to doctor, what we're going to do, we're going to display the name here. Otherwise, just going to say no, okay? So what's going to happen if I run this code? So as you can see, we have the last column that's fourth. 
and I have Amina, Julia, and Priya. And these are actually what's going to be in the final result. We just need to get rid of all these uh, unnecessary nodes before. Okay, so there will be some nodes that will appear in case that uh, one of the columns has more co rows than the other. So, for example, this one, Jenny, Samantha, Noel, and then Ashley, Christine, and Caddy. So, but we don't have to have so many nodes, so we're going to get rid of them later. But for now, this column is for doctor. Then you repeat the same pattern for all the three other professions, okay? So the same pattern. If you can do with one, you can do with all of them. So we're going to do here. I'm going to create another column. And this one, if the occupation is equal to professor, we're going to display the name. Otherwise, we're going to say no. If I click run code, and verify what it looks like. As you can see, it now appeared right here. And this is because you can see Ashley is selected because that's the row for Ashley. Belvet selected that's because the, that's the row for Belvet. Nadaro professors, as you can see. So I left the name and the occupation here so just so we can visualize what's happening, how the data is being shaped. But in the end, the final result, you don't need to display or have these two in your query, okay? The name and the occupation. Let's do the other one. So after professor, we're gonna say if occupation is equal to singer, we're gonna display the name. Otherwise, else case, we're gonna do no, okay? So the first argument is the if condition. The second is what happens if that is true. And the third argument is the else case. What happens if that condition is false? So we return no. Comma, let's do if occupation is equal to actor. Then we're going to do name. Otherwise, else we do no. Okay. So we got all four of those. Okay. So let's run the code and see what we get. So as you can see, now we have the columns for actor here in those rows, uh, for doctor in those rows, for professor in those rows, and for singer on in those rows. Now we got to shape this so it's better to the final result here, right? Got rid of all these nulls and remove the first three columns. So we can get rid of name, occupation here. It's not necessary. And what I'm going to do is I have to do a derived table here. So I'm going to select something, okay? I'll do it in a second from this whole result, this table that we created, okay? Now, because MySQL, when you do derived tables, asks for an alias, we have to say as some name, whatever. I'm going to say derived table. Now, what I'm going to do here is I want to select, and I, I need an aggregate function. It could be min, for example. I just need an aggregate. That's the thing. Because I'm going to do here uh, group by, and I need to group by this value here, value of the... Remember that number, the one, two, three, four, based on the actor or one, two, three, based on doctor. I need that number here. So I need, I'm gonna create an alias for this so I can reference in this group by outside. So I'm gonna say here, we can say maybe row number or something like that, okay? And here outside I'm using the same name, row number. So I'm gonna group by them. That means I, when I have the one here, all the ones, you can see, one, one, I'm going to group them, meaning I collapse them into a single row. So this one will co be combined with this one. It will be combined with that one. It will be combined with that one, right? So if, if I take them here so you can better visualize, and I'll paste them here so you can see. This one. Did I do Ashley? Yeah. So we're going to take all of these and combine based on this number. Because the same number, they all become one. So you're going to have, let me remove those because we don't need them. So essentially, you're going to have Amina here. We got Christine here. 
We got Ashley here. So something like this, okay? So that they are each in their proper column without all those extra stuff, okay? So that's what it's doing when you do a group by that. So to do this, I, I need to do a select here and I'll select using an aggregate. So I'll use min, okay? I need to reference the value of the column for the doctors. I need an alias here to make it easy for me to reference there. So I can see as whatever name you want, you can get, call it just doctor and you can say doctor here. And then you do the same thing for every other column. So I'm gonna do comma min, professor, and at this name professor has to be the alias for this one as professor. And then I'm gonna do min of singer and this name singer has to match the alias for this one right here as singer and finally I have to do min of actor and this name actor here has to match the alias for this column here so I'm going to say as actor now let's run the code now we get an error and that's because I used row number here and that's probably a keyword so I have to say another name that's not exactly row number. I remove the E and just number. Let's see if that works. And there you go. Now you can see we got those columns consolidated into one and you can see the first column for doctor, the second for professor, and the third for singer, the fourth for actor.